distinguished Hello. president of CMA, Mr. Achayam, the guests of honors, the founders, distinguished invitees. I'm extremely happy to be once again in Koriko and in this evening to be among the entrepreneurial elites of Calicut. We all know from antiquity to modernity, you have been a prime node of political economy. And you deliberate, you contribute to the business-oriented economy of the country. And it is befitting that you have chosen the subject leadership, innovation and transformation, which is extremely relevant in the present context. And if you recall, in the year 2005, a book came out, The World is Flat. Because of the technologies that are available, the access, the time required for the access, all changed. And that was a revolution. And a revolution for many. The supply chains, the delivery chains, and even the value addition became global. And that opened our eyes to the rest of the world and also reminded us we need to change. We need to catch up with what is going on elsewhere. Otherwise, we'll be left behind. It's essentially this technology revolution that has forced the last couple of decades to move from the third industrial revolution to the fourth industrial revolution, which is these days called Industry 4.0, 4, IR, etc. We also use this term disruptive technologies. Disruptions coming because of the introduction of a new set of technologies. They change the whole ecosystem, they change the whole way things are looked at. Sometime in 2013, in U.S., McKinsey Institute came up with an exercise. At that time, they identified 12 technologies. We all talk about artificial intelligence, how it is affecting us. But more important there is to avoid the knee-jerk reaction, to avoid lagging behind, and to see how these disruptions could best be utilized for us. And also, if possible, how to become drivers of new disruptions. That means technological leadership. And that means innovation. And that is the context in which India and institutions like IMA and the other management associations should look at this issue and it can come in systems, it can come in organizations, it can come in the way we look at every aspect of technology, applied science. And if you look at what is happening in the world, World Economic Forum is very well known. Every year they come up with an index, it's called Global Competitiveness Index. After the 4 IR came, there has been improvements in the way they look at the countries. And among the 140 countries, India now stands at around 58. And a marginal improvement compared to the previous year. And if you look at how this is arrived at, there are almost 100 parameters grouped under 12 pillars. And two important pillars relate to the subjects that you are talking about today. Innovation is one of the important elements. Where does India stand in the innovation ecosystem in the whole world? This has been happening and we are somewhere at the median. Somewhere between 60 to 80 among the countries in the world. 
obviously that is not something which is good for the future and we need to improve that and that improvement happens at the macro level government will be there to look at those aspects but every one of us if we can do in our own domains of activity we are going to make breakthroughs in this area i come from the space domain and here there are almost 80 nations engaged in the space activities there are a few who have the ability to launch the satellites there are almost 15 to 20 who can build the satellites about 60 who at least own a satellite alone or in partnership mode and there are several who make use of these systems where does india stand in this domain it is something which is creditable for the country over the last 10 years there has been a benchmarking being done by an american organization called futron and india is at the sixth position in this area us russia the european space agency which is a consortium of several countries in that region then we have japan china india followed by canada brazil etc etc that means it is possible in this country it is possible by those who are coming from the institutions of this country and it is possible by the leaders who are from this country so it's a good example that we have got to and learn lessons from that and what is that essential lesson that we can learn from this organization i would say one is there is a grand vision an indomitable vision there is transformational leadership and there is team excellence we talk about an organization with nearly 16000 members spread all over the country started in the year 1962 in a very modest way in tumba but now we are at this position in this world with the sounding rocket we started we got into making satellites and launch vehicles we built national systems for use by everyone in this country that made an impact we went to the next level of excellence looking at moon and looking at mars chandrayaan and mangalyaan and currently we are looking at the next frontier the human space flight and that has been the growth throughout in this thread you will see the imprints of those leaders dr sarabhai and professor sadish thawan who guided this program for the first two decades what is transformation leadership it is well written in management books talked about over the last 15 years how it is different from what is called the transactional leadership which most of us try to do to get the results but this transformation that the leaders do to all the people with their grand vision with their ability to reach every individual in the organization to become role models who could be emulated by every member of the organization and to look at things which are difficult to but could be achieved and that is the need of the hour when you talk about mahatma gandhi when you talk about martin luther king they are all of that category but they were in a different domain if you bring that to our own areas of activity then we could do that transformation bring the best from every individual in the organization we talk about team excellence it means a lot there have been several studies how you could amalgamate people from different cultures people with different aspirations different levels of expertise to come together 
and play as a team. You would have seen the movie Chakdi. Essentially, making the team effective. It required several things from the members of the team and the leadership of the team. And let me also say that here 1 plus 1 becomes 11. That's the basic secret behind it. But to make that happen, you require certain culture to be adopted within the organization. And whenever you do something new, whenever you do something difficult, there will be failures. The question is, how do we understand the reason for the failure rather than trying to point fingers at the persons who are doing it. And we learn from the failures, from the failures of our own activities and the failures of others. This is important. And the leader, the transformation leader, takes the responsibility when things go bad, but gives the credit to the members when things go well. Transformation leader develops leaders, enables them to look at the larger picture and then the multiplier effect comes out of that. And that is what is essential for the country. So in every area of activity that you do, if we can follow this team excellence concept, then you will certainly achieve. And that is one lesson we take from what ISRO has done, ISRO has been doing, ISRO has been sustaining, and what we expect would happen in the future. One lesson which I have learned, and when we do all this, we will face challenges. When we take up a major task, we will face challenges. The secret is, how do you convert this challenge, our challenge, to make it as the challenge of all other members of the team. Once you are able to do that, half the job is done. Each one of the member will have that as the target. It requires a lot of things. And that is where the transformation leadership gets into the picture. Work with them. You are not something coming from the heaven to tell them what to do. Work with them. Learn from them. Support them. Facilitate them. Encourage them. And inspire them. If you can inspire, you get the best from everyone. And that is the need of the hour. And I am extremely happy to see a lot of young faces present here. And with the kind of legacy that this place has got, I am sure the future is bright. Wish you all the best. And let me thank the organizers of CME for inviting me to be amongst you today. Thank you.